Hi, my name is Evan Wardell, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the approaches I've taken to revise and build upon the adaptive music system in the Wise Adventure game during the process of rescoring the game. For the structure of this video, I'll be going through individual features which I've added, first giving a brief description, then showing it in action, followed by a slightly more detailed explanation of how it works, and a look at that feature within the Wise project, as well as the code where applicable. If you're not interested in listening to extensive talk about WISE implementation, I've added timestamps to this video indicating where the example of each feature is shown. I've also put a link in the description to a separate video of one quick playthrough of the build without commentary, in case you'd just like to see some of the features in context. Rather than starting at the beginning of the game, I want to start off by talking about the most significant change I've made, as understanding this feature provides some necessary context to the structure of most of the other features I've added. Those familiar with the Wise Adventure game will know that the base build provided by Audio Kinetic arranges much of the music for different regions using somewhat of a vertical mixing approach. That is, if two pieces of music are transitioning into one another, they're generally following the same overall formal and harmonic structure, and so will immediately crossfade from one to the other at the same point within each track, with the main change being to the musical arrangement of the theme. Now, this is a very useful approach. It allows you to immediately change the overall tone of the music to match any new region when you enter it, without interrupting its overall structure, creating a smooth, continuous experience for the listener. However, this approach also has some limitations. For my approach to rescoring this game, the main concern with this method was that it doesn't really allow for separate, distinct melodic themes for each area, as these would almost always be interrupted before the end of a musical phrase when transitioning along with the next region's theme starting to play after that musical phrase has already begun. That being said, if I were to instead approach this problem by simply waiting until each musical phrase is completed before I transition to the next region's theme, I would be losing that sense of immediacy, creating an awkward delay before establishing each region's musical identity. In order to address both of these problems, I've taken an approach which separates each region's theme into two layers, melody and background. The background then has many different versions created, one for each region into which the player can transition from that point. These versions maintain the form and harmonic structure of the current region, while adjusting the orchestration and musical arrangement to the style of the target region. With these separate stems set up, I'm then able to implement a hybrid approach where, upon leaving a region, the background transitions into the new region's style while the previous region's melody continues to play until reaching the end of the phrase, at which point it smoothly transitions into the next region's theme, with a new melody beginning and the background style remaining consistent. Now, I want to give a brief glimpse at what this looks like within the WISE project. As you can see, this village theme still has its own playlist container, as it does in the original WISE Adventure Game project. You can also see that I have it separated into two music segments for the intro and loop sections of the theme. If we expand the loop segment, we can see that it contains a wide range of tracks, all with some designation of melody or background. Try not to pay attention to the separate Melody A and Melody B tracks or their set melody event cues. Just think of these as a vestige of how much iteration it took to land on this approach as it is now. Looking at the states settings for each background track, we can see that there are volume adjustments which are set based on the current music region state. This allows us to fade each background track in and out after the state is changed to reflect a new region, but before the actual transition behavior has occurred. While this could also be accomplished using a switch track, the use of state-based volume adjustments are necessary in order to instead use switch tracks for another purpose within this music segment, such as day-night variations, which I'll be discussing later. Now, if we look at the transition settings for the overarching Music Regions Music Switch container and scroll down to the Village to Woodlands transition rule, we can see that the source, in this case the Village Playlist container, is set to exit at next queue. 
This is also the case for the transition from woodlands back into village. Looking back at the village theme, we can see that I've placed custom cues at the end of every musical phrase, and this is what that transition behavior will be looking for. So, when moving from one region to the other, we can see that the music will continue playing until reaching one of these custom cues, at which point it will fade out into the beginning of the new region's playlist container. Now, one problem you might have noticed with this approach is that it still necessitates a hard fade between regions at the end of each phrase. While this isn't a problem if the melody cleanly ends before the cue, and the backgrounds are arranged similarly enough to crossfade seamlessly, it does get a bit messier if a melodic phrase starts with a pickup note or ends with a decay or reverb tail that lasts considerably beyond the bar line. To address this issue, I've further developed this approach to incorporate separate music segments for each musical phrase, each with its own pre-entry and post-exit content. Looking now at the Cave playlist container, we can see that it's separated into many more music segments than the Village theme, with one for each musical phrase. Looking through, you'll notice that these segments contain no custom cues, only the standard entry and exit cues. If we look at the transition behavior for Cave to Woodlands, we can see that it's set to Exit Source at Exit Cue, with Play Post Exit enabled. What this means is that when transitioning into the Woodlands playlist container, whatever phrase from the Cave is currently playing, the last note of each track will be able to resonate without interruption, even after the new playlist container has begun playing. Now, circling back to the way that this overall structure interacts with previously existing adaptive music behaviors from the original Wise Adventure game, I'd like to briefly talk about how day-night variations are implemented here. As you can see in the Woodlands music segment, the main melody and background tracks are set up as switch tracks, with separate stems for the day and night versions of each. The implementation here is the same as before, with the game's time of day RTPC setting the day and night switches, which then trigger the transition between tracks. However, it's worth noting that keeping this functionality only further increases the complexity of having separate background cues for each possible region transition. For example, the village theme, which does not have its own day and night variations, still needs to have a switch track for the village to woodlands background, as you may be making this transition at any time of day. Another feature of the music in the original Wise Adventure game is an enemy theme, initially set up as one separate, concurrently playing music playlist container which fades in or out based on your proximity to enemies. While this worked well for the original setup, it doesn't scale well once every region has its own theme, each with a distinct formal and harmonic structure. To address this, I've instead created specific battle arrangements for each region's music. As you can see in the WISE project, this required the creation of a lot of different tracks, further increasing the complexity of each music segment. The battle music itself also had to be separated into melody and background tracks, as it's possible to transition into another region while in combat. Not only that, but separate background battle stems had to be created for each other region into which you might be transitioning. Each of these tracks is then faded in based on the same enemy music RTPC, on top of other determinants such as the state-based volume settings I discussed earlier. To make this work at all, though, some adjustments had to be made to the code. In the original Wise Adventure game setup, battle music was actually determined by three separate RTPCs, one for each enemy type. This, in turn, dictated the battle music by adjusting various enemy-specific tracks, leading to a different musical experience depending on what enemy types are being fought. 
However, one can imagine that this would be a bit of a nightmare to scale on top of the already complex system that we're making here. So, in order to simplify this a bit, I created a new catch-all RTPC for all enemies, then searched through the code solution in order to find where they set up the values for these enemy-specific RTPCs. Having found it in the game manager script, within the distance to enemies coroutine, I then set the value of this new singular RTPC as a minimum value among three enemy-specific parameters. In other words, I'm seeing how close the nearest enemy is, and then in Y's, using this value to determine the enemy music's volume. While this isn't a programming tutorial, I just want to make a brief mention that this required setting a reference to the new RTPC within the game manager script, then setting that RTPC within the inspector in Unity. More information on how to do this can be found in Audio Kinetic's WISE 301 tutorial. And now, I'd finally like to talk about the beginning of the game, that is, the title screen music, and how it transitions into the rest of the soundtrack. In the original WISE adventure game, the title screen music is set up as its own independent loop, a playlist container separate from the music region switch container, which cuts out without any transition behavior when you click on start game. However, for my approach, I wanted to make this into a more seamless musical transition, dropping down in tempo and energy in order to set the tone for the beginning of the game. There were many changes necessary in order to make this work. First, I needed to integrate the title screen music playlist container into the music region's music switch container in order to take advantage of transition behaviors. This then allowed me to set the transition rule to utilize a transition segment when moving from the title music into the rest of the game, which fades in using a pre-entry symbol swell, then modulates key and decreases in tempo over time until the exit queue, at which point the starting area music begins while post-exit content continues to fade out. I also needed to make sure that the Music Region's Music Switch container actually plays during the title screen and does not create a duplicate call where it was previously initiated upon game start. To do this, I first adjusted the Music Title Screen event, which now sets the Music Region's state group to the newly created title screen state, and starts playing the Music Region's Music Switch group. I also located the line within the Game Manager script's start function where it posted the event which plays the Music Switch group and commented out as it would now already be playing by this point. While this covers most of what was necessary in order to have the music play as I intended, it turns out that much more needed to be done in order for it to be heard properly. As it turns out, the title screen and main scene of the game both had their own audio listeners, which overlap for a moment during the transition between scenes. This becomes a problem when you have music continuing to play during this transition, as it creates an audible pop or clip for the moment that it is being heard by both listeners. To solve this problem, I made use of the singleton pattern, along with Unity's Don't Destroy Unload functionality. While I won't get too much into the details, as again this isn't a programming tutorial, for those interested, I created a new static listener script which I attach to a movable listener object created in Unity. This object contains Wise's AK Audio Listener component, and the script sets a static instance so that there will always be one of this object. Then, when this instance receives the change scene no manager function call, it removes itself from its parent object, sets its position and rotation to zero, and moves itself to the don't destroy on load scene. This function is then called directly from the load scene and load scene on click scripts prior to the calls where they load each new scene. I had originally implemented this to listen for the active scene change scene manager event instead, but at one point it stopped actually moving the listener in time, and given that I was the only one working on this code, I elected to take the simpler route to making it work rather than troubleshooting the entire scene management system. Then once the listener object is in don't destroy on load and the new scene has been loaded, the object which should contain the listener, in the case of the main scene this is a player character, then uses my new grab listener script to find the listener, move it to the active scene, and set it as a child object. Moving back to Wise and the actual music system, I elected to use a separate structure for the starting areas theme. The intention here was to create a variable system that accounts for players who might stand still in this area for longer than expected, while also transitioning seamlessly into the village theme, and without actually dedicating more musical resources to this area than the average player would ever hear.
Looking at the training area playlist container and its segments in the WISE editor, we can see that this setup is actually remarkably simple. The main music segment only consists of three random step tracks playing on a two bar loop. It will randomly select between four pizzicato lines, two percussion figures, and two woodwind trill recordings, with the latter two random step tracks also including an empty track for variation. The only other part of this is a separate first segment, which ensures that the playlist container starts by playing the pizzicato line, which emphasizes the tonic. In the home stretch now, let's talk about the process used for transitioning from the Forge music into the final battle theme. This is a new distinction, as the original Wise Adventure game build only used the dungeon battle music for this encounter. But in order to raise the stakes, I wanted to set this up such that the music increases considerably in intensity, transitioning into a more intense arrangement through chromatic modulation and acceleration in tempo. Just like for the title screen transition, here we also modulated the key and tempo using a transition segment, this time exiting the source on the next beat in order to make it more immediate. Because I didn't want a player to be able to cancel this effect and awkwardly go back into the Forge music by exiting the arena, I implemented this using a separate in final battle state, which I then used for an additional state association path in both the dungeon and core music playlist containers, as well as the newly created final battle container. I then set this state using a new trigger volume in Unity and a simple new script which sets a designated state when the player enters a trigger. As one final touch, I've created a system for music which plays after destroying the core and beating the game, which initially celebrates her victory with a fanfare, before slowly coming down in mood as the player progresses through the wizard's foreboding dialogue. You did it! I can feel the evil energies fading! The darkness has been vanquished! Wait! You hear that? That horrible sound! We did not defeat the evil, we set it free! In Wise, I've accomplished this using a nested victory music switch container within the overarching music regions container. It has three stages, and transition behavior has been established such that any segment can transition into any other segment which comes afterwards in the progression. This way, it doesn't matter how quickly somebody mashes through the dialogue, even if you skip each line immediately, the music will still find a way to make a logical progression to the end without outlasting the ending animation. The way that these transitions are called, then, is using a new Victory Dialogue Count state group. As the name suggests, I've set each of these dialogue states to be called by a separate line of dialogue from the wizard. This is done simply by adding set state calls to the corresponding dialogue events within WISE. While this isn't ideal from a coupling standpoint, in the absence of the ability to work with the gameplay programmer to integrate this within the quest tracking system, it's at the very least a fine system for a proof of concept. At any rate, that's the last feature I wanted to discuss in this video, so if you made it this far, thanks so much for watching! While this was intended less as a tutorial than as a general showcase, I hope you've gained some appreciation for how incredibly powerful WISE can be in creating complex music systems, and perhaps some inspiration for new creative approaches to adapt to music that you can take yourself. If you have any questions or feedback, feel free to reach out or leave a comment. Is there anything you would have done differently? Is there anything that I did which you'd like more thoroughly explained? Is the way I organize my code deeply upsetting to you? <laughs> Whatever the case, I'd love to hear it. Anyways, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.